Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also as Mark Zickery of Space Command and Star Trek and Twilight Zone Companion and on and on and on and on. I am in London pitching science fiction and fantasy TV series. So I've been meeting with BBC Studios and I'll be meeting with ITV and I had a lovely lunch with the fellow who produced the Twilight Zone play, stage play that was just put on in London and it's just been a, a very nice trip. I'm staying with my Space Command supporter and friend uh, Ron up in Hampstead, it's a lovely home in Hampstead, which interestingly enough used to be owned by Stanley Unwood who published the uh, Lord of the Rings uh, originally, so it was, uh, it's, it has a great lineage where I'm staying, so, but, uh, and so, uh, but we're going to be talking about Star Trek, the latest exa uh, episode of Star Trek Discovery, which I just watched with Ron, and we'll talk about it, we'll talk about it, uh, first of all, I'll, I'll tell you some other little interesting tidbits. Uh, I just finished writing, last night at 1 a.m., I finished writing my new pilot, Night Meeting, which is about a 12-step meeting for um, uh, monsters who don't want to be monsters anymore, and it is set in London, in Hampstead, and Blackfriars, and Tussauds Museum, and many other places around the city, so it's really fascinating that, uh, that I got to write something set in this town that I love so much. And uh, so, so that was what's been going on. Uh, some of you, if you want to read it, maybe we can provide it for you, but I'm pitching it now to the networks and the studios, so we shall see what will happen. You never know, you never know. So, okay, so let's talk about episode, I believe it's episode 14 of Star Trek Discover, Discovery. It's, a, it's such an interesting show. So, it has so many strengths and so many weaknesses. But uh, let's let's get into it. So okay, so this is the episode, and spoilers. There's spoilers ahead. So uh, so if you don't want spoilers, don't uh, don't listen. To this. Don't don't listen to me. But here are the basics. Uh, it takes place in the mirror universe. We found out, of course, that uh, Lorca was the evil Lorca from the, the evil universe, and uh, Michael is brought. So she, we managed to kill Lorca and get back onto the our, our ship and get back to uh, to our Federation space, Federation universe. And uh, but but Michael, who had felt guilty over uh, 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 her captain's death, uh, Michelle Yeoh brought the evil Michelle Yeoh, the Emperor Michelle Yeoh, back to her universe. So, okay, so far, so good. Uh, so then, then the, the episode went very, very peculiar. So now, you know, maybe you loved this episode, maybe you didn't, but I thought I had problems with it. I, I still, I like the show. I think it's doing an honorable job. I think they're trying hard, but, but here's, here's, this, here's the problems with this, this episode. And this is, this is why I love the Mirror Universe stories. You know, when, when they went to the Mirror Universe, the Mirror Universe is a universe where you know the rules. Your subordinate officers will try to assassinate you. You have to, you have to, you have to fight for your, for your position. You, there's, there's the agonizer in the agonizer booth, and, you know, Michael was trying to navigate between her, the Emperor Michelle Yeoh and Lorca and all of that. And you knew what the rules were, and our characters were trying to act honorably, but, you know, the evil characters were going to, you know, bomb the planet and kill the, 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 the good rebels and all of that stuff. The, so, so you understood where, what the rules were and the characters were acting according to rules. So the bad guys were acting like bad guys and the good guys were acting like good guys. And great, great. And the stories tracked and they made sense and more or less and, and off they went. But now that we're back in Federation space, it's going back to some of the weaknesses of the show from earlier episodes. And, and let, me, let me just recap the plot as much as we can. So they come back into Federation space, they've jumped nine months ahead into the future, so uh, the Klingons are winning the war, have, have taken over 20% of Federation space, have destroyed, I think, 30% of the Federation fleet, blah, 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 blah. So, meantime, of course, Michael now knows that her boyfriend uh, is, is, is a Vok, the Klingon, or, or, or Vok with a human uh, meld, or whatever the hell he is. And, uh, and he killed the doctor, uh, you know, uh, Michael Rapp's uh, love interest. So, Okay, so, so here's the plot of this episode, in, in brief, so, if, as, as well as I understand it, so basically, um, you know, Saru is now captain of, of the ship, and he, and, and, and so they say, they check out the, the, the boyfriend, now, 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 my understanding is, because they keep talking about an operation where Vox's body was, was scourged, and his, legs, his, his limbs shortened, and all this terrible stuff was happening to make him physically look human, so apparently this is actually Vox, you know, looking like a human with this artificial personality overlaid that tells him he's a human, that seems to be the case, so in that case he's actually a Klingon. But which would be in keeping with the human-like looking Klingons we've seen in other iterations of Star Trek. So, but it's, because they're playing it almost like he's no, it's a Manchurian Candidate thing where he's human and he's just been been brainwashed that he's Vok. But that's not what they're really saying. If you listen to the details of what they're saying, so okay, so 
but but the captain says, well, I'm not going to imprison you. You know, I'm going to give you this little bracelet and let you wander the ship, which seems pretty wacky. And then, uh, you know, because he just killed the doctor, for God's sake, and uh, and tried to kill Michael. Okay, but and and does not seem too well wrapped. I mean, you know, the fact that, you know, what, is the Vok personality going to reassert itself? We have no way of knowing. God knows. So, okay, so, and the female Klingon's linked up, locked up in the brig. Is she going to be our pal? I don't think so. So, okay. So, but he's just wandering the ship, and then he, then he has this poor little 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 school schoolyard moment of sitting at his table eating his little lunch all alone because everyone is shunning him, and it's so sad. And so Tilly joins him, and she's going to be his friend, and and then other uh, other Starfleet personnel join him, and they're all sitting around the table talking to him. And it's like it's like every high school movie you've ever seen, seen it, including all the bad ones where the where the, the ugly duckling gets to be be popular now, and 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 the good people, the, the nice people, really really care, and 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 they're not an outsider anymore. Well, that might work if it's, you know, 16 candles or something, but, but this is Star Trek Discovery. This is, what the, what the hell? And, <laughs> and then meantime, you know, Tilly's saying to Michael, why can't you just cut him a break? And, 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 and Anthony Rapp is saying, well, you killed my boyfriend, and I hope you feel bad about it. Well, yeah, I feel bad about it. I mean, what, what, what? And meantime, they're, uh, you know, and th then, then meantime, we've got the Admiral, uh, you know, the Emperor, uh, the Emperor Shenzu, you know, Emperor, Emperor Giorgio is, uh, you know, Michelle Yeoh is, She's, uh, she's, you know, being kept there, kept, kept on the down low, you know, God knows why, but okay, so because I guess they don't want to reveal that there's a mirror universe, but okay, so she's kept on the down low, and, uh, <coughs> and then the Admiral shows up and is, you know, uh, the girl that was, you know, Lorca's, uh, uh, main squeeze or whatever, and, you know, and she's trying to figure out how to win the war, and, uh, meantime, we need, we need more mushrooms, we need more mushrooms for our mushroom drive, uh, you know, so they, they, somehow fire them down onto a planet or a barren moon or whatever the hell and then somehow zap them and they they grow fast and we've got more mushrooms it's like magical technology which is you know when you think about a mushroom drive you know uh, I, I maybe I'm not up on my latest physics but I haven't heard about mushrooms being uh, being what you would use to power a warp drive last I heard it was things like fusion and you know things like that but uh, you know etc so Anyway, so, okay, but I figured out the test of how to tell if Star Trek Discovery's stories make sense or not, or work. Okay, here we go, guys, um, and I think you may like this. He, and and I, now I know that Star Trek Discovery is not the original Star Trek or Star Trek uh, The Next Generation. They're trying to do something new and modern, quote-unquote, 21st century, but here we go. Let's take this plot, this exact plot, and put it in the original Star Trek and see if it makes sense. So... You have a, a Klingon, apparently a Klingon, disguised as a human, who comes aboard the Enterprise and kills Dr. McCoy. And then Kirk says to him, well, it wasn't great that you killed Dr. McCoy, but we'll just let you wander around the ship. And, uh, and then he sits alone at the table and, and everyone, you know, and, 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 and Uhura and, and Chekhov and Sulu feel bad for him. So they sit with him even though he, he murdered Dr. McCoy. And they're just kind of going to be pals and there's a kumbaya moment. And meantime, you know he's uh, he's feeling bad that his girlfriend is upset that he tried to kill her, and so so and everyone's saying, well, no, you sh you should really cut the guy a break. And okay, well that might have been uh, uh, how people tr tr treated abusive relationships back in the uh, in the in the you know 60s, but that wasn't how they treated them on Star Trek, nor nor should we treat them that way now, because this guy did actually try to kill Michael. So, um, but, you know, but, okay, so then, continuing the analogy, so, now, one thing I didn't mention is that the Admiral, in all her wisdom, uh, decides to, to dress up Emperor uh, Giorgio, Michelle Yeoh, as the captain, and say, that, well, the captain survived, and she's going to lead us to fight the Klingons. Well, let's see if that makes sense. Now, maybe the Admiral is the evil Admiral from, from, Admiral from, from the Mirror Universe, but probably not. She's probably the Admiral from Federation space, but, you know, but either way, it's a real bad idea uh, to do this. So let's take it back to the original Enterprise. And this plot from Star Trek Discovery, if it were on Star Trek, the original series, would make no sense at all, and everyone would be going, what on earth are these characters doing? And the part, main reason is because in that show, we care about the characters. So if Dr. McCoy got murdered, we would care. If the Enterprise were put in command of a megalomaniacal evil duplicate of our captain, we would care. You know, it would it would be something we would object to. If everyone were, were being all friendly with the guy who murdered Dr. McCoy, we would care. But also, the, 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 I think the point of this is, in the real world, if someone murdered somebody, we wouldn't just give them a pass. We wouldn't all be sitting sitting with them and feeling sorry for them and saying, well, you should give this, this guy a break. No, we would feel bad. It doesn't matter if he's a human who's been brainwashed or a Klingon who's pretending to be a human. He still killed the doctor. He still tried to kill Michael. It doesn't matter 
you know, if he's brainwashed. It's like, this guy is a loose cannon, he's dangerous, he should be under, con he should be under security guard, he should not be allowed to wander around, it's ridiculous. And it's, it, this, is, this is what's called head writing. It's where you're in the room with your writers, you're working up the storyline or the series arc or whatever, and you're saying, oh, okay, well, this is where we're going to take these characters, and this is what we're going to do with these characters. And, and in the telling of it, in the moment, in the beating out of the story, it seems to make sense. But then when you sit down to write it, it's like there's no way to write it where it has an emotional um, clarity or an emotional truth. And so this is why this story seems very, very, very wacky and disjointed and, and loopy. So um, I still have great hope for this show. I, it, it has strengths. I think I'm, sh I'm, I'm I trust they'll be bringing Lorca back, the good Lorca, because the actor is so powerful and so um, interesting. And you know, and I'm glad that Doug Jones has been given so much to do. And uh, Saru is now a much more uh, warmer character, and, and and I like better what they're doing with him. But still, you know, these, these decisions, I mean, again, Starfleet was Starfleet in the original Star Trek and even in Star Trek The Next Generation because it was better, because it was driven by a moral code. And I think maybe this is an analog for America and the idea that America at its best can be wonderful. And now we've gone into some very dark times and some very questionable actions. And maybe they're trying to draw the an an analog with that. But still, I think Star Trek has been a beacon for creating a better future, a hopeful future. And I think the moment it, it comes off the rails and it's doing anything and there's moral justification for any action, any choice, I think you've got a problem. And I think the, the moment that you say the enemy is evil and we are good and, and we just have to destroy them, we just have to win, you've got a problem. Because again... Uh, George Orwell got it right in 1984. The enemy of the past becomes the ally of the present, and then we, then suddenly the past is forgotten, and the enemy of now is the enemy forever until they're no longer the enemy, and then there's a new enemy. And unless you see that it's the, the, the notion of an enemy that we have to fight, the notion of an enemy that we have to look at, and we have to find ways to have peace, find ways to have everyone raising their kids uh, with security and having safety and having all the things that we all want, um, then, then we can't create a good world. We, we, we have a problem. So, anyway, that's it for now. Mark Zikri, uh, Space Command is continuing forward. We're, we're working on visual effects, even if, as I sit here in London. And um, so you can still buy shares in Space Command. Uh, email me at markzikri at gmail.com. Uh, you can pledge on Patreon to help keep the wheels on the wagon. And uh, it all moves forward. So, Night Meeting is the new pilot that I just finished writing last night. I think it's pretty cool, and I'm continuing writing Space Command, and uh, we're going to be shooting more of it very, very soon. So that's it uh, from London, England, in the heart of the uh, planet Earth. <laughs> we'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.